Oh yeah, thank you. I, I have a couple of things. Um, I don't really want to be broadcast here on the mic unless I need to be. Uh, so I share the concern with the shed. I have a question. Um, Who are you? I don't know. Am I talking too loud? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's echoing. <laughs> a lot of echo. Um, well, just a couple quick things in my opinion on the shed. I think the fact that it was built uh, uh, inappropriately or Ill illegally doesn't strike me as a great rationale to leave it there. I'm just saying. Um, secondly, uh, I have a question about gas and oil storage in the shed, and 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 hopefully your shed is in better shape than than mine. But flotation devices, fish and fishing gear. That that's all that's in that shed. Yeah, and I just want to make a note there. I mean, the whole idea here is to protect water quality, so obviously that's one of the reasons why there's a 25-foot buffer there. Um, congrats on your bittersweet removal. Good luck going down the road. I just wanted to make a comment in, yeah, in, in, in Maureen's nice report. I think it probably came from you, Maureen. You identified a couple of good, I don't know, blueberry bushes and alder, some good plants along with some bad plants so I just wanted to make a footnote hopefully certainly with Marines help you can figure out which ones to keep you want the native ones obviously um, and maybe plant more I had a question on the dock um, how do you install the post I mean is the dock there the dock is in the water oh, okay so the post how long have the post been there did you put those in or were they that dock is old? now I think about maybe three years old three years and how aluminum, did you aluminum post with a uh, like a poly deck on it? Okay, were the posts driven in? Oh, no. just so they're just sitting. Are they on they, those uh, they flat they pads? On, I sent uh, I sent the agent some photos of the pads. Okay. The, yeah, you have, one, you have one of those nice aluminum docks. It's a nice dock. I, bet, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, and then I just had a question in my mind, and David. I would defer to you as our agent whether this is really a factor, but I'm kind of curious whether um, your abutters or others on the lake have any questions or whether we've received any questions about the shed being on I, the lake. I have not. Uh, of course, uh, for RDAs, abutters are not notified. Not the photos, yeah, here, here are the... Uh... Although I think one of the abutters notified the town regarding the, sh the work. Is, is that how this came about? That's likely. Yeah, so <laughs> I think the abutters are aware. Were the photos of the dock included in the RDA? I thought they were. Well, while you're looking, those are my only comments. It's a seasonal dock. The dock comes out at the end of the year. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. And uh, again, David, I need some help later from you on the rigs, but um, it seems that changing the shoreline and creating a beach is a little bit different than just a shed and a walkway. And so maybe that's something for the commission to think about. And David, you can later advise us what the regulatory okay. implications or what the regs say about that. And, yeah, and, and I do want to say one quick thing. I mean, I totally understand it's a man-made lake. I mean, we're not talking about it. To me, that's what makes a lot of this difficult. We're not talking about a pristine wilderness area here. It's an area that's been heavily changed over time, so I appreciate that. But I'm curious what the rigs say about converting shoreline to beach. So that's all. Thank you. All right, thanks, Peter. Um, on to Dave. This lot is a, a tenth of an acre in size. Sure. Yes. Okay. So that I'm not so sure our building definition falls under that. So I'm, 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 um, <clears throat> normally we're talking about a building. We're talking about a building on a, on a building lot. A tenth of an acre is not a building lot. So that's it does, it does the, um, the our regs say that no building. I don't know whether the shed meets the definition of a building. Does anybody know? Uh, it doesn't require. It does not require a building permit. So it doesn't meet our definition of a building. So the 50-foot no build would not apply. 
Uh, correct. Um, the thing that might apply or would apply would be the 25 foot no disturbance. Yes, um, because that's there, independent of the building. Yes, there's 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 also an exemption for sheds in the bylaw, um, if they're under 144 square feet and and, the, and they're more than 50 feet away. This one is 80. 80. 10 by 12, correct? Right. Eight by 10. It's 8 by 10. So it's 80 square feet. So it doesn't need a building permit. <laughs> um, if it were more than 50 feet away, it wouldn't even need conservation commission approval. Right. Because that's right. an exemption. Um, <clears throat> I don't, I want to spend a, just a little bit of time talking about what does this set a precedent? Because there are a number of other properties on, along Freeman Lake, and as soon as one person sees somebody do something, somebody else says, well, gee, I guess I can too. We have a 50 foot no build, 25 foot no disturbance for a reason, all right? Um, this shed, I don't think meets the letter of our definition of not wanting a building within 50 feet because of its size, what its use is. You said it doesn't meet the definition, didn't require a building permit, excuse me. Um, so in that sense, I don't have it. I do not want us to start setting precedents to violate our 25 foot Actually, there's a 30-foot one, too, which does not apply to the gentleman, and our 50-foot one. Um, so in that respect, I think I will approve it. I want to make sure that no chemicals, fertilizers, and stuff are stored in the shed. You said they wouldn't be, but that doesn't mean somebody five years from now wouldn't do it. So somewhere I want to make sure we all understand that, and the, and the, and the applicant understands we don't want that stuff. Um, did your applicant verify that this removable dock does not need any state permits? So we'd need a Chapter 91 license, but the first step in getting a Chapter 91 license is to get a permit through the local conservation commission. So it's a catch-22. It's a catch-22. <laughs> so it's something that we can get, and in fact... I mean, um, the fact that it's aluminum, the fact that it's removable, the fact that the applicant said he intends to... Bring it up on the shore, I guess. That's what you're going to do. Is it wheels on? It will, get, it will get ruined if I yeah, don't. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, there are wheels on it, right? So you just roll it out and no, leave it there? there, there, are, there are no wheels So you on just it. pull it up and leave it there? Yep. Okay. Just muscle I mean, it up. So it certainly, in that sense, is not a permanent right. structure. That's all I hear. Right, Greg. Uh, Bill. Yeah. Well, I've been down there at least three times looking at this. <clears throat> and I, actually measured the shed. The shed's an 8 by 10 shed. It's on cinder blocks. Nothing was excavated to put the shed in. The shed is a pre-made shed that was put on blocks. The, the closest corner to that shed is 15 feet from the edge of the water. <coughs> to move the shed to get it 25 feet away, you'd have to go up this little two-foot incline and disturb an area up there for what I consider no purpose at all. It makes no sense. So the shed, you can't have gasoline motors on that lake. So there's, no, there's not going to be gasoline stored in the shed for any purpose. It's, far, it's, it's a few hundred feet from his house. He's not going to bring gasoline down there for any lawnmowers or anything like that. The dock that he has there, aluminum dock, is probably three inch round legs or square legs on five inch or six inch square pads. They just sit on the, on the bottom of the lake. They're all around the lake. Everybody's got one of those docks. The sand that was put down there after he cleared all the trash out, he brought it in in play sand in bags. So it's not like a truck came down there and transformed this place. There's a little bit of sand just covering the, the dirt that was there. There's no, no beach was built, no edge of the wetlands, because I've been down there, like I said, three times. No edge has been created. A beach isn't created on the edge of that water. It's just sand was sprinkled around where they walked down. So to me, I have no problem waving the 25. It'd be, it would make no sense at all. You're not going to protect a lake by moving that shed 10 feet an additional 10 feet away. It's all, like I said, it's already 15 feet away. 
he's cleared the pretty much most of his little piece of land there of all the trash and it looks nice I was there yesterday it's, it's a beautiful spot there's somebody who a homeowner came in because he was asked he, when he did this he had no clue that he even needed to come before us so it's not like a, a contract a builder did something and tried to sneak it through so in my opinion I would give him the waiver for the 10 feet the additional 10 feet the dock isn't an issue there's probably a dozen docks around that like the same thing different size and shapes if you walk around Russell Road which is on the side of the lake there's everything from picnic tables to plastic sheds to beaches that are, are much more substantial type of things so we're making a mountain out of a molehill with this particular thing he didn't know what he was that he was doing something he should have when he did it I don't want to create more costs for him to move that shed it's not you can say move the shed or raise it up who's gonna you have to pay somebody to do it and additional money for what purpose it's not we're here to protect the, the lake not to cause a homeowner a taxpayer money for the sake of that we can so um, that's all I'm gonna say I'm fine with the waiver it looks beautiful down there if anybody should take a look look at it that hasn't and see he did a nice job he should be proud of what he did granted the shed was put in before it should have been put in but that's the way it is all right thanks Bill yeah. uh, mark your comments questions yeah I tend to agree with most everything that was said so far uh, I consider that a minor disturbance I don't think it's anything that's detrimental he has done a good job cleaning it up and I don't I don't think it's worthwhile to move the shed just to prove a point that it's within 25 feet of the edge of the uh, lake I like to see that nothing else gets built on there from that point this point forward but uh, I'm, I'm tend to give him to give him the uh, variance Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, Carl, comments, no, questions? Nothing to add. Good. All right. Good. Uh, Mr. Coons, anything mm -hmm. further? So I, I just had a question on the dock. So how is the dock actually? Um, so so it's seasonal, right? Yeah. You put in you put it in the spring and then take it out uh, in the fall. So right. so how how do you actually do that? Is you just push well, it out into the water? Or? The guys we pick it up and just walk it out. So so you, so you just like hand carry it. Yeah. Out. He's young enough he can do that. <laughs> well, it's an aluminum frame. You take the deck off mm -hmm. first. You know, what, you, what you're bustling in and out is mm -hmm. just an aluminum frame. So, 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 the, um, so the posts rest on, rest, uh, are on pads that just rest on the bottom. There's actually nothing that goes in. Just in, rests in. on the right. bottom. It sits there by gravity. There's okay. no drilling in. Nothing and driven into the, into right. the, into the uh, lake bed. Um, Okay, well, that's that's good information for me to know. I, th I thought that the posts actually were like pounded, pounded into the lake bed, right. in, in in which case I in which case I would have said that it should it should require a notice of intent. Um, but if it's if it's just resting on the bottom, yep. then I think that's a different yeah. That makes a big difference. A different situation. Yeah. 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 Well, this is a public hearing, so if anybody from the public has uh, anything they'd like, to, any questions or uh, comments that the uh, commission should hear. Now's your time to come to the podium and let us know. All right, I don't see any public comments, Chris? questions. Yes, Dave. I think this is another example of us not being able to communicate well enough with the citizens as to what the regulations are. And that's our fault. I mean, we run into this a lot. People who come before us like this gentleman, and they didn't know. Now the question is, are they supposed to know? Well, maybe they are, but I certainly understand when somebody doesn't know. But it's up to us to do a better job of promoting what our regulations are. Be interesting. Maybe I'll do it now. The weather's better. Just walk around Freeman Lake and see how many docks there are and how many via, quote violations unquote of the 25-foot no build there are along that around that pond. Because we all know the history of Freeman Lake, so there have been a lot of 
small stuff out there. <laughs> it's not like they were all two-acre lots that people built mansions on. So. Well, my understanding from Mr. Johnson, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm misremembering something. I mean, you haven't owned the property for very long. Oh, yeah, only a few years. But, but didn't, didn't you tell me that your realtor told you that there were no conservation issues when you bought the property? <laughs> Uh, that I don't remember. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you, we won't expect you to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I checked was whether or not I needed a building permit for that size shed. But, but I think that's really important that I, that I think the people that are talking yeah. to the representatives yes. of the sellers, yes. you know, have but some also, responsibility. But also, David, you'd be amazed how many people think that conservation land around Freeman Lake is actually private property belonging to somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that. So people actually yeah. build stuff on conservation, that's not you. People actually build stuff on conservation land thinking it's their property. Anyhow. No, well, good point, good point. So I think procedurally what we'd like to do now is, um, I think we can close this public hearing so if I could have a motion then from a uh, commissioner to close the hearing and a second so we can vote to that. Right. Mr. McLaughlin on the motion, uh, Carl Bischoff on the second. Uh, any discussion before we vote? All those in favor of the motion to close the public hearing, aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, non unanimous. So the, the hearing is closed now and now we enter the phase where the commission uh, discusses or deliberates and then takes a vote on any action we're going to take. Mr. Chair, I move we waive our 25-foot no disturbance regulation. A uh, motion by Dave McLaughlin to waive second. the 25-foot <coughs> bill on the uh, second. Uh, any uh, discussion before we vote? All those in favor of the motion, aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, yes. All right. Good. David, um, what, under RDA, <clears throat> what what are the various options we have? Well, this uh, um, there 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 would be a couple. There would be uh, a, a negative um, two, uh, which which is that um, at least some of the activity is proposed in an area subject pr to protection, but will not alter that area, which I think would be the dock. Um, then then the rest of it would be um, you know just buffer zone work, which will not alter an area subject to protection. You want two of them? Two votes? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, there. Negative were, two and a. Right. I mean, it can all be done. It can all be done is in it, the same. Is it, an, is it another number? Another negative sign? It's a negative two it, and. Uh, and a negative three. Yes. Yeah, two and three. Yeah. Under Chair, two and three. I, I move we issue a but, negative. But, but just, just one I'm thing. Sorry. Um, I, I, I heard some um, discussion earlier that, that the restrictions on what's stored in the shed should be permanent. And now, yeah. now uh, a determination of applicability only lasts for three years, at least just nominally. Um, but I think, I mean, it's not usually done, but I think, I think it can be, a uh, determination can be recorded on the deed, which, and if that's the case, that would become permanent. So I guess that's, that's the way to, to do it. Unless, unless you want to make it a positive determination, which would be a notice of intent. Of course. No, he's gone through enough trouble. I'd like to say, I'd like, I mean, we don't know that a subsequent homeowner won't keep the chemicals in the shed. That's but why the, would they? Uh, who knows, Billy? You know, that's the point. You we can't don't put a boat No, I understand. We, we, can, we can make an argument, but I understand that. But we don't know what the next homeowner is going to think, right? That's all. And I don't think we have a standing regulation or town bylaw that talks about storing chemicals. In we've done it. We've done it before. What? We've done that before. Done what? T told people they can't put chemicals oh, yeah. in. But 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 he's saying we have to get it. We have to we have to vote that. Billy's saying we why why we shouldn't have to concern ourselves with it. I think. Well, you could put it in as condition. Yeah. You know, when a negative with conditions. But my point is, is that it won't be permanent unless unless the determination is recorded. And what I said, since it's not permanent. And we don't have a, an overriding regulation on all our properties that says you can't store chemicals within some distance mm -hmm. of a wetland. Maybe we should revisit that separate. That's not going to. I don't want to hold him up for that. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm prepared to let. I'm prepared to do it for three years. All right. So I think what I'm hearing is we have a motion for a negative. Um, Determination two. based on uh, number two, item two and three, and, and then we add some conditions that there be no storage of chemicals 
fertilizer, chemi- you know, well, fuels, fertil- anything like fertilizers, that. Fertilizers, chemicals. Yeah. Just say no chemicals, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then in terms of Dave's comment about not setting a precedent for other buildings close to the lake, is there a condition <laughs> that we could put in, you know, no, no additional structures or something? No, not for this guy. Uh, not he knows it. he knows to come before us next time. And we just have it to won't be we, we just have to we just have to drive around Freeman Lake a lot more, that's all. <laughs> so I've yeah, moved that we fun. issue a negative two and a negative three, which is good. Negative's not bad. <laughs> and, and that we uh, and we not allow the storing of chemicals in the shed. As a condition. As a condition. Right. All right. So, a motion by Mr. McLaughlin. Do we have a second on that? Second. A bill on the second. And then, um, just, just some yes, sir. discussion. So, I'd also put a condition in, in there to let uh, the office know when the Chapter 91 license has been um, <laughs> granted. Sure. The yeah. process has been started. It was okay. kind of just getting. I hope the act before the season's over. <laughs> and, 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 and I would also like to see the walkway added to the plan, even if it's just, you know, a length by a width. Okay. Just, you just, just measure the distance from the water, um, the closest point, and then just the width, and, you know, based on the scale mm-hmm. of the plan. Just, just sketch that in just so that we have it for the record. Okay. That's Fair a enough. fair request. Yeah. yeah, that's reasonable. All right, so we had uh, the motion by Mr. Blockland, uh, seconded by Bill, as amended with the uh, conditions that we've just heard. Um, any further discussion before we vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Catch some fish. <laughs> okay, the uh, next uh, regulatory hearing that we have is a notice of intent. Um, after the fact filing, this was continued from uh, September 27th, 2022. Uh, Mr. Keith Silva, 120 Gorham Street. Uh, Susan MacArthur from MacArthur Environmental Consulting LLC is representing the applicant. I, I'm Hi. Hi there. Hello. Um, thank you. Yes, it's been a, a few months since we've been before you, and um, we uh, continued till tonight just to give it time to er- everything to grow and um, and whatnot. So, um, as a recap, um, the project, the notice of intent was um, an after the fact filing um, for the construction of an addition as well as. Um, some soil that was um, excavated <laughs> to put in the foundation and uh, it was on the hillside in the buffer zone. So that has since been uh, spread and removed. Um, There's actually a lot of soil. It was removed and um, the area was seeded and I think the grass is starting to grow. Um, Keith, are you there? Hi, sorry. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Susan. Um, and also, um, some boulders were put. Um, uh, I think David had asked if they could be put at the 25 foot um, uh, buffer zone, and they are actually um, more conservative than that. Uh, Keith measured recently, and I think they're more like 35 feet from the wetland. So uh, that will serve as kind of a limit of any mowing or any any other uh, disturbance beyond that those boulders uh, boulder slash wall kind of stone wall um, but any anyway Keith if you want to add in anything uh, yep yeah, no uh, Dave and I had a meeting after we talked to Susan um, he wanted a little additional more stuff so I hired Marty from Marty's landscaping and uh, Friday, he will be able to do what was recommended, and hopefully, this should be all taken care of. Okay. And we yeah. also, I just want to add, we had proposed uh, some plantings to mitigate for um, the areas that were disturbed, and uh, some of those, I believe, are installed, um, but I think we have a few more to go. Correct. Yep. 
All right. Well, Ms. MacArthur, uh, thanks for the update. Sure. Um, and uh, we'll just hear from our agent. Do you have any additional information you want to um, share I, with us? I do, yes. I, I met with Keith on site yesterday. Um, there, ha, ha, You haven't been out to the site recently, have you, Susan? No, I have not. So, I mean, there has been some improvement. Um, there's no doubt about that, but there's still a ways to go. Um, there's still a significant erosion problem. <coughs> um, there's uh, um, the, the, er the erosion control is, is, is down in most places. It's in places where it's not down. It's, the sediment has reached pretty much to the top. So um, I was hoping to meet with the landscape contractor that Keith has hired. Um, so far that hasn't worked out. I, I, I'd at least like to have some opportunity to provide the landscaper with input. So again, so there's no misunderstanding that, you know, again, next time I go out there and take a look at it, that, that I'll see that there are still additional things that need to be done. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's where things stand with, from my perspective. Um, I, 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 you know, given, given um, the, uh, sort of the magnitude of the problems that are still on site. I don't think the hearing can be closed tonight. I mean, it, it sounds like we're making some progress, um, but I, I, I agree, uh, David. I mean, it sounds like we really have, you know, I think having Marty's Landscaping involved, those, uh, that, that firm has a good <laughs> reputation in the community for getting things done in a good manner, that we get them engaged and, and then they understand what has to be done, that's gonna help. Um, well, let's see what we have for uh, for uh, commission comments. Uh, John, down to you again. I'm just going with what Dave says. Just keep an eye on it. If they got to put some more erosion control down. They have to to finish. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 fairly simple and straightforward. It's not rocket science. It just needs yeah. to be done. Got to get something established. Right. Get it finished. But but it but but it's not even a condition yet where any planting can be done. Within the within the 25 foot, oh. I mean, there's 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 soil there that's uh, full of large rocks. Um, there's some large pieces of wood that that all needs to be you know cleaned out and nicely graded. Um, I don't know whether any soil would need to be brought in uh, for the planting. Um, certainly, I would certainly defer um, on that question to the landscaper's opinion, but. You know, again, I, I, I'd like some kind of an opportunity to interact with them, even if it's just by email. Yep. You know, so I mean, I think David's making a really good point to the commission here. I mean, it sounds like, you know, you need to be able to have that dialogue with Marty's Landscaping and a nail down kind of the next steps, feel uh, a level of confidence that what's going to, what needs to be done is going to get done. So, I mean, it sounds to me like we're going to need to get a continuance to let that happen and then come back again and get an update, you know? I'd like to see a little sense of urgency here. Exactly. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot's been done. But we want to get we want to get this thing you know done and over with as quickly as possible. Honestly, it, it's it's dragged on since September of last year. And I, for you, everybody, we want to get these things resolved and done with. I'm sure. So, so Keith, oh, again, as I mentioned, I'm not going to be here on Friday. Is there any way that you could agree to let me meet with Marty tomorrow or Thursday? I can uh, definitely call him and see how his schedule is, but if, I think everybody knows Marty's the good guy and he'll get the job done. So yeah, but, I think I hired the correct person on this one, so I'm sure he could try to meet you before then. But well, yeah, but, yeah I, please I, please have him get I just can't say me. yes. I don't know how his schedule is, but he did meet me meet with me today. And a lot has been done. It, the only thing that's left is a couple of, is some of the roots and some of the, it's not as bad as it, it's implied, but I truly understand and I am getting on top of it. All right. Yep. But, but to the point, I think yeah. um, Marty's got to meet with David or somebody from Marty has to meet with David. That's the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. Has, has to happen. Yep. Yeah. We, will, we will definitely make it work. Yeah, Oops. and it's not a telephone call or an no. email. It's yeah, you got to meet in person on site. Yeah, on show site. them what yeah. needs to be done, yeah. and do it. Yep. Yep. Uh, our next meeting is June thirteenth, so it's a couple weeks away. You know, so let's. Um, my suggestion is we get uh, we continue to then, and then get an update, and hopefully we have you have that information and in meeting on site that's needed to be done before then. So yep. we really get this thing moving. 
So I make a motion that we continue. No, no, I got Dave. Mr. Silver, why is this taking so long? Um, well, it, the ground fr froze on us, and I hired the wrong people at the beginning of this. And then um, pretty much created, uh, did a job that's, I guess he's an illegal immigrant, and he did, um, he pretty much stole my money, disappeared. Um, turns out when I talked to my lawyers, the guy was, he's known for this, he keeps doing this. So then I hired another person, and he did the majority of it. But I'm just going to hire Marty to just get the small little detail because literally 90% is done. It's it's all pretty much scaped. It's back to almost to its original. It's only probably like roots, some loose rocks. It's not as bad. It, it, you will see a huge difference like, by the next meeting. I can tell you that. Mr. Mr. Silver, when you started the project, were you aware of the conservation requirements on the site? Um. At the time, I didn't think we were into the buffer zone, and then when I saw him digging, coming home from work, this is when I seen this, and then this is when everything happened, and what, we took a substantial amount. There's probably, whatever was there is probably 10% left compared to the 100%, if we want to say. Everything's been getting done. I am. Did you go to town hall initially to get whatever necessary permits you would need? Not not necessarily uh, not necessarily conservation. Yes, of course. Yes, I'm David, a, I'm a when someone builder, goes for I a can't. permit, isn't there a checklist that says each of the following departments have to sign off yes. on the work yes. that's and, done? And, and, did we uh, sign off on the? I, I did sign off on it. Um, I uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll accept some of the blame. Uh, I, I signed off on it based on Keith's assur assurances, oh, based on a filing he did well, a couple well, of years yeah. before that it was outside of the buffer zone. Um, so I, I, yes. I, I didn't do a site inspection. In hindsight, I should have. Um, but am I correct? There, conservation has to sign off yes. before anybody starts any work. Yes, right? and, and, and I did sign off on it. I right. When I went to do a site visit later on, lo and behold, I saw that the work was well within the buffer zone. Right. Well, that just supports the argument of we should have a certified plot plan so David isn't in the middle of this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, it's just an example, that's, really, of, um, of kind of like a plot plan it doesn't spell out the work that has to be done, but just, you're right. I mean, it should just need it. Right. But I think but the he, big problem. He can make the determination. From what I've heard it's since last January is this applicant really was somewhat unaware of the kind, the magnitude of the work. That would be required to stabilize that site for whatever reason no no i had no idea but well before i had uh conservation before the wet wetlands has received has came up even has taken more of the land by that time was the last survey that was done prior probably four or three years i would say four to five years ago when i did this before I hope you don't for the pool <laughs> And so right. the, the land just kept taking, the wetlands just kept taking over more and more of it. So I, well, and now the way the wetlands is, it, it's, gone, it's gone a lot further than it well, keeps going. I don't know how else we, to explain we, that. We, we definitely want to get this situation stabilized. We got to get it resolved. We got to move as much urgency as possible. And it's a good, it sounds like this step of getting Marty's involved. We just have to get Marty's to meet with our agent on site. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we can come back our there's, next meeting. We, there's no reason it can't be 100% comp completed by our next meeting. We, we, we meet with Marty. Yeah, we're, we're, we're literally 10% left, and right. he was supposed to start Friday by ripping what we, me and Dave have already talked about and discussed. So um, I'm going to talk to Marty and try to get him to be around tomorrow and the next day, but he's definitely going to start Friday doing everything that was talked about. So it, we should be 100% down. Well, but again, I would like to review that with him again. So absolutely. That we're all on the same absolutely. Page. I just can't Otherwise say we'll he will be here. Be, yes. right. I, don't, I just don't know where he is in 40, from the past 48 hours. But he will start Friday doing everything. If we have to meet the next following day, it's just we will, you'll definitely meet with him. There's no, I just can't guarantee, I don't, Marty's a, I, I can't speak for him like that. That's all I'm trying to say. I can't promise something right. like that. I right, understand. Peter, uh, one last thing before we continue. Uh, yeah, I just have a comment, and, and David, if you're going to, if you end up working with Marty and the homeowner, I, I think my comment is well covered. Um, but I'm interested in the restoration plan, particularly in this case where there's been some impacts that we're trying to mitigate. 
Uh, so it's important uh, that the right stuff gets planted, as, as Susan well knows, and David, you know. It, so I would just advocate, it's, it's, do we pay some attention yet yeah, to what is planted? It's, it, uh, excuse me, it's all Japanese knotweed. Everything's invasive in that whole yep. backyard wetlands. It's completely taken over. Um, well, we are putting all new native 12 different plants, you know, but it, it's literally, it's a lot of invasive plants trying to take over. It's bad. Yeah. Well, in the in the notice of intent, Susan did include some restoration plantings. Um, yes, it, the it, 12. It, it, Actually, 12. There 12. are 12. Um, I can just read them off. High bush blueberry, um, sweet pepper bush, um, pussy willow, and silky dogwood. And those were all species that I did see out there when I had delineated. <clears throat> um, yeah. But, but, I, but I don't think it covers the entire, I'll go back and double check the plan, but my recollection is from the last time I looked at it, it not, did not cover the entire area within the 25 foot no disturb setback that was disturbed and does need restoration. So I think some additional planting, uh, or at least the seed mix will be required, Susan. I can certainly review, I can certainly review that with you at, you know, uh, a little later. Um, right, right. I, I think um, they are going to have to put the um, seed mix down as well as but the... It, but it's an absolutely no condition to be planted at all at this point. You know, it needs to be prepped much better. Right. That's why Marty's here. And that's, that's what I want to discuss, one of the things I want to discuss with him. Uh, Mark? I, I just want a quick comment. I, I want to see this happen as soon as possible. This is the ideal growing. And yeah. I want permanent stabilization for next fall, in the summer, with the time coming up. Yeah, good point. All right. Yeah. We need a motion to continue to our next meeting. Move we continue the hearing on 120 Gorham Street until June 13th. Second. Okay, motion by Dave. Carl, on the second. Any discussion? Nine, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nine, yeah. All right, June 16th. June 13th. 13th, I should 13th. say. June 13th. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Keith and Susan. Thanks. Okay, the uh, next item we have in tonight's uh, regulatory agenda is the uh, notice of intent continued from uh, May 9th, 2023. Uh, J.S. Master from 6 Durrell Drive and Kenneth uh, Lania uh, from Cornerstone Land Associates representing the applicant. Uh, we have a continuation. Let's have an update from the applicant's representative. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Kenneth Lania, Cornerstone Land Associates, representing the Masters this evening. Um, at the last hearing, there was a request by the commission to have us go and meet with the Tree Commission uh, on site. Uh, I believe David and Peter were also uh, present at the meeting. Uh, we reviewed the two closest oaks uh, to the driveway expansion area. We agreed to pull back some of the driveway pavement, install a construction buffer around the father oak, um, leave the existing edge of pavement for the driveway where it is. And you can see that with the round circle going around the tree in the plan for the revision. Um, in doing so, uh, the tree commissioner also suggested that we size down the drainage. He didn't think expanding into the wetland area um, for an outlet would be uh, healthy for the trees as well and we sized that down. Now that basin is still 225 square feet. It is a single family house with a single family driveway and we are installing roof runoff in addition to the small sedimentation basin. So I do believe in my professional opinion it's sufficient. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Uh, David, uh, anything you want to point out to us? Is this, um, have the issues that were open been now um, resolved? Yes, yes, I think, I think this is a good plan. I, I, I think we've, we've achieved both an improvement uh, in the drainage, a uh, substantial improvement, and uh, being able to save the trees, which good. not only the commission's desire, but the homeowners as well. Sure, so. good. good. Okay, good. Um, so our next step would be to uh, close the public hearing at this point. Uh, any last public input or comments before we uh, close this public hearing? No public uh, input. Uh, anybody from the commission, any last questions or comments before we close the hearing and deliberate on this uh, matter? Uh, Peter. Yeah, I just wanted to thank the homeowners and, and Ken for working uh, with the tree committee. Um, 
just as you as you know, the tree committee has a couple of professional arborists that have a lot of experience, and I was personally happy. This is not a first, but maybe it is a first where we were trying to work through, bring some expertise in to work through ways to you know, that one, meet all the requirements. So I'm happy, and thank you all for doing that. So the, 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 one, the one that got involved was very helpful. <laughs> so hope, hope to do that again, absolutely. Good. All right. Well, that's good to know. We appreciate that. Because uh, I wasn't here, I can't vote on this one. Correct. So you, you'd be abstaining, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we need now a, a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Uh, moved by Dave. Second. And seconded by Carl. Um, all those uh, in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. With an abstention from, from Bill Vines, okay? Because um, he had missed the, the previous uh, part of the hearing. So we've now um, closed the public hearing. This is uh, a notice of intent. Uh, so we'd be looking for uh, a motion then for um, order of conditions, um, standard order of conditions. Are there any special conditions? Uh, no, I don't, I don't see any uh, special conditions necessary per se. I think as a practical matter, it's going to be a matter of me working very closely with Mr. Lania and the uh, contractor that's okay. hired. To, to make sure ev everything is is built according to the plan because there are there are some fill some pre some pretty precise tolerances here so going to have to coordinate very closely okay good so uh, we need a motion then for a standard order of conditions so moved uh, moved by uh, Dave McLaughlin John on the second and uh, any further discussion before we vote uh, all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed um, unanimous unanimous but with the extension of Mr. Bill Vines. On the matter, so everything's been uh, been approved. Excellent. I appreciate Thank your time so this evening. Thank you for Thank you. working with us. Okay, that takes us through our regulatory hearing matters for this evening. Uh, next up on tonight's agenda is a discussion. Uh, this relates to some uh, ratification of enforcement orders at Zero Littleton Road and 35 Brick Kiln Road. Um, let's hear from our agent, I think, just to give us an update on, on these matters. So um, I met with uh, Susan, who's uh, working for Mr. St. John uh, and, and Mr. St. John. Um, uh, I met, I, met uh, I think it was last Monday, met with Susan and Mr. St. John on site. Um, he, he actually started un undoing uh, some of what he, he had done. Um, which I, you know, I don't, I don't see any real major problems with that. He should have waited until he got the um, the okay in writing. But uh, he um, he so he um, he start, he started that a little bit. But but uh, there's still more that needs to be done. If you just read read here, I have the enforcement order up on the the screen. Um, so what's 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 needed now is. Um, well, a submission of a restoration plan by June 15th for the 25-foot no disturbed setback from wetlands. Um, so I think, Susan, as you and I discuss, uh, let you say more about it. it. That's really pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it's, yeah. Again, it's just a matter of, of a seed mix, I think. Um, again, um, but there's but there's also then uh, sub, sub, at some point subsequent to the initial. Uh, disturbance. There was a, um, a storage container was put on site that's within 20 feet of the wetlands. So I, I included in the um, enforcement order to move that uh, outside the 25 foot no disturb setback. So I don't know uh, if that's been done yet or not. Susan, do you know whether he did that? He, has, he hasn't contacted me, so I, I don't know. <laughs> and he's, a, he's away. What's uh, in it? He's, What's in the shed? He, he, he was saying uh, it, he, 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 he intend to store mainly like... Yeah, well, you know, what's he, in it right now? Um, uh, I don't know if there's anything in it. His, he, his intention is to store, he said, yard working implements. I understand, uh, but there might be stuff in there that we would prefer not be in there. We don't know. She can't talk to her client or hasn't talked to her client. I want to make yeah. sure there's nothing in that shed that's going to hurt the wetlands. Um, I'll, I'll just add that the wetlands, Susan has delineated the wetlands uh, on site. My understanding is, and I presume you don't have any additional update on this, Susan, is that the surveyor has begun the process of putting the delineation on a plan? That's what he told us. Okay, and then, and then um, 
and then in, in addition, uh, addition that, that the, the crushed stone needs to be yeah. removed from the 25 foot no disturb um, as well as all cut trees and logs um, smooth out piles of disturbed soil by raking and then and then uh, you know by July 1st require submission of an RDA for construction of the entrance to the property placement of the storage con container and then any other activities proposed for riverfront area and or outer 75 feet of the 100 foot buffer zone so. yeah so, so my sense is is that again um, no disrespect to you Susan really but it just seems like things are not moving at the at the speed and the level that we want to have happen and so again not not your fault you're waiting to hear from your client but I mean whatever he we're going to do vacation. pardon me he went on vacation I know but this thing has <laughs> still been it's been dragging on overall from for a while okay understood what is a building permit required for a storage container uh, that's a good question I think this is less than 12 by 12 so it, it may not um, but I'll, I'll ask about that but he's in violation of our 25 foot no disturb yes yes if there a cease and desist on it should we consider a cease and desist on him and get him to move it off until he tells us what he's gonna do well the enforcement order uh, requires that it be moved outside the 25 foot no disturb when? Um, he said he was going to do it like this week, but it, well, can we have somebody week, pick it up and move it if it's that small? Get it off the no, side. No, no, it it needs no. A, it's a storage in violation of an enforcement order. <laughs> right, right. He can't just. I mean, he needs equipment to move it. It's big. Oh, the town's got plenty of equipment to move it. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 is the size of this? Uh, 20 foot container. It's a 20 foot? I'd say it's 20 foot. Yeah. It's metal. It's like steel. storage. Steel, yeah. storage, you know, like a, you know, a heavy steel. type of a yeah. ship container. So, Shipping so, type container. Yeah. So it's 20, 20 bodies in there. For length 20 way. feet. What would I would say way? it's a 20 Eight foot. foot. Eight. So that's 160 feet. That is, that is over the 144. Yeah. Guys, we have had trouble, not with this gentleman, but we have trouble on that site for 30 years. Let's not let this one get away from us. Uh, Susan, question. So where do you think we'll be in two weeks, you know, at our next meeting? What do you think's really well, we're going now? I'll yeah. send him an email tonight and ask him if he moved the shed, the storage unit outside of the 25 foot buffer. And hopefully the answer is yes, he has. Um, and then I'll start working on the restoration plan um, and start preparing the RDA for at, like after the fact work. Right. Um, so we'll get that uh, get that started anyway. And um, David, what did you say the date was for that? The July. Uh, what I put in was July first. Um, the Perfect. restoration plan is June fifteenth. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, but certainly we can revise the wording because the commission needs to ratify this. So with regard to, I, di I didn't put immediately move the storage container. I think that's kind of implied, but that could be explicitly added in to immediately move the storage container, but it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. And you did anymore. tell him that. At, I think you told him that at the site. Yeah, and I thought yeah, he was, I thought he was going to do it yeah. quickly, but you know, could certainly put immediately into the for enforcement yeah order. I think we should have it immediately we're going to be ratifying this this enforcement order tonight and again I mean Susan, as you know we we like to work with the applicants we like it when the applicants get a professional like yourself involved it, it, things go so much better so that's a good thing and we are very reluctant to go down the path of legal action or fines and penalties or that type of thing but that's something that's still there we don't want to go there hopefully we don't have to be in that place but your client right. needs to be aware that that could happen and we don't want that to happen but it can yep. be there um other comments from the commissioners before we we need a vote to ratify the enforcement order with immediate action to move that container uh, outside the 25 foot uh zone any more comments i think if none I, we need a motion yeah, peter I, I i just agree with dave i mean this is on a sensitive wetland yeah it sure is and it's been dragging on yeah. This is a type of container, a shed that 
on this particular type of a site where there would be gasoline, there would be equipment to work on that site that's gas powered. So yep. that, yep. this is a situation where that's what that container is for. Just for putting a compactors, chainsaws, gasoline, oil, hydraulic fluid for equipment. Well, you could tell them to remove it off-site. I mean, the entire site is within the buffer zone. Yeah. You could that's, tell that's them to remove thinking. it entirely off-site. I'm well, not quite well, sure if there's a bylaw for containers. Pardon me? I we, thought there was a bylaw for we, containers. Well, we don't have one, but there may we be. We don't, but the building. Right, there may be somewhere else. The building department has a bylaw, I think, for containers themselves. I'll, uh, I'll look into that. Yeah, and, and you know, the other question is uh, what other activities does the owner propose? Well, or, you'll never get an answer out of that. Well, that'll well, be I know, the, that'll I know, be, but that's the, that is the question. But that'll be in the RDA. That's what yeah. the enforcement order says. Yeah. yeah. He wants to see what he's got. We'd like to have him be part of this discussion. But right now we need to take, this, this commission needs to take some action to uh, ratify the enforcement order out there. We need that. We need that thing pulled out of that 25-foot area immediately. So um, I, we need a motion to that effect. Then I make a motion to remove the 25-foot to 20-foot trailer out of the 25-foot no disturbance. And to ratify the enforcement order issued by our agent. Okay. Second. And it's seconded by uh, Bill. So a motion by, <coughs> by Mark. Seconded by Bill. Any discussion before we vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Uh, thank you very much, Susan. Thank you. Thank and you, Susan. Um, we'll uh, we'll see you in uh, in two weeks. Is June thirteenth the next meeting? Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. She's earning some money tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then, moving along. Um, um, so another enforcement order. Yes. So um, this 35 brick kiln road, I believe, I believe one of the property owners is here. Are you here, Catherine? No. All his neighbors are here. And it sounds like neighbors are here too. Yeah. Good. Well, she uh, she had asked to be admitted, and I admitted her, but it looks like. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh, um, so uh, any anyway, so um, Tell yeah. Tell about this one. Uh, so I. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I got I got um, several calls um, uh, 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 that there was some activity going on in uh, in and near wetlands on 35 Brick Kiln Road. Went went down and uh, did, did a site visit. Saw yes, indeed, that um, there'd been a, been extensive a clearing of the buffer zone, um, some clearing of the wetlands, um, pushing. Um, Pushing fill into the wetlands, clearing and filling and bordering vegetative wetlands and buffer zone. Um, so it, it, it actually, though, it turns out that there actually had been a wetland delineation previously done, um, because I, I, I gather that the property owners um, uh, had uh, wanted had put in a garage. You see the proposed garage um, on this plan. It, it, I think it's actually out there right now, but it turned out to be outside the buffer zone. But uh, so so in, so in in any case, it was very helpful that uh, a, a, um, a wetland delineation and a plan had previously been prepared. Um, so the, the first thing I, I did was uh, have the the property owners have the wetland flags replaced because a, a lot of them were um, were gone. Either they had fallen off naturally or had been disturbed. Um, so that's that that's been done. Um, I, I did issue them this enforcement order uh, re requiring that uh, all all of the, the fill, which which includes the logs, the cut logs um, and trees and disturbed soil, that all be removed from the. Um, the wetlands and the 25 foot no disturb setback. I did a site visit there yesterday. Um, that some of that has been done. I would say there's still more that needs to be done. There's there's still more, um, you know, junk junk tr uh, trash and debris in the wetlands uh, and 25 foot no disturb setback that needs to be removed. So. Um, I did. I did indicate that to the property owner that, that I met with. So, 
Um, that's that's the current status of that situation. Okay. Um, this this um, this uh, enforcement order also requires the filing of an RDA. Um, the property owners indicated to me that they they want to extend their lawn back there. Um, they're also constructing a retaining wall and again any other activities proposed for the outer 75 feet of the 100 foot buffer zone. I guess there may there may also be some interest in storing like some trailers in the buffer zone. Um, so that's required that by July 15th and again the restoration plan by June 15th. Um, they have not hired a wetland consultant yet but this enforcement order does require them to do that. Okay. But I think, I think the, the highest initial priority was to get everything out of the wetlands and the 25-foot the no disturb. Okay, good, good. I mean, typically we next go to have the, the commissioners ask questions, but we certainly want to hear from the neighbors and abutters tonight, okay? Okay, with now? Um, yeah, let's like have you come up and kind of give us some input. I think it might be helpful to the commission at this point. Okay. Uh, so I'm, your name and address, Yep, please. I'm Carrie Conway. I live at 3 Moore Street, so I am directly next door to 35 Brick Hill. Um, there's, there's a lot going on next door to us, uh, a lot more that needs to go past uh, Conservation Commission. Um, they are currently running a landscaping business out of 35 Brick Hill Road, which is not zoned for business. Um, there are landscaping trucks parked at that, this uh, residence every night. Um, there are probably four to five landscaping trucks as well as two trailers. Um, one of the trailers tends to have be filled with trash, which is parked in the back towards the wetlands. Um, they put in a large driveway um, as well as gravel driveway down behind our property is um, right at the edge there, um, right behind, maybe also on our property. But again, that's another, another committee to talk to. Um, also, the, the garage that was built there, I never saw a building permit for that garage when it was built. He, his company built that garage themselves. Um, again, I know that's not this when committee. When was that built? That was built last summer. Last, last summer. summer. Um, that was put in last summer. They are storing all of their materials for their um, landscaping company in there. So we're talking about, you know, everything that's filled with gasoline is in that um, storage container. There's also a carport um, in the back that goes right behind my property as well um, that has different machinery in there. Um, so there's a lot going on, a lot that, again, extends beyond your committee, but I just want to let you know um, what's been happening. Um, often as well that there are trucks um, parked on the grass as well in the, at that property, and um, their employees are also parking on the property all day long, which I know is a zoning thing. But thank you for listening. Well, thanks, Ms. Cosway, for your input. Uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, neighbors or butters. Do we have a locus of where this is? I, I don't know what it's probably. You know where Marty Spaulding lives? Yep, we know. Yeah. <laughs> Was this, <laughs> this Ray, yeah, Ray, 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 Ray no, 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 please don't. Please don't. <laughs> but her house is maybe four houses or five houses from this site. <clears throat> That's yeah. where it is. I'm trying to. It's almost it. at the, it's right at the end of, it's at Moore and Spaulding. It's right at the end of Moore. I don't know, D David. No can you pull up some, something with a locus so we can see kind of where it fits in? Uh, uh, sure. Just past UPS. Just past UPS. That's On the good. right. It's across from the sheriff's department. Okay. It's what? Used to be a, a charter school there. Yeah, 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 it was a charter, charter school. Yeah, school. Yeah, charter yeah, school. Yeah. The sheriff's yeah. department. So it's on the left side. Yeah. So if you're coming down Brick Kiln down the hill from Gary's Ice Cream and you're going towards UPS, that's on the right. It'll be on the right. Yeah, Moore Street goes off right. to the right, yep. and literally right there, there's a big yellow house. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, it's sir, right your, name, uh, your name and address yes. for the record. Sorry. Uh, Kurt Stahl, 25 Brick Kiln Road. I've uh, been a, mem been a uh, uh, living in Chelmsford since 1996, and uh, been at 25 Brick Kiln since 1999. Um, never have had an issue with a neighbor, never have had issues in our neighborhood. And um, until last year. And um, it really comes down to a matter of consideration. Um, and there's been issues with noise pollution already. 
Um, there's a lot of business going on there. A lot of trucks with trailers coming and going all the time. It's, it's disturbing the pattern traffic, the traffic pattern. Um, illegal burning. So just most recently we had to call the fire department in because they had a huge bonfire going there with who knows what they were burning, but it was not just wood. You know the smell, right? When there's chemicals in there, you know that smell. Can I answer that for one second? I can see them from my back. Yeah, just come right up to the podium if you could so we can uh, right up. We want to make sure we get there's you plenty of room here. Yeah. I can see them right out of my back yeah, right out of my Hi. kitchen window. In your and your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry, Phil Petchek, Five More Street. Okay. And we I abut them also because of the way the property comes around. And I had something else I want to say afterwards. But in the case of the burning, I could see out there, they were out there spraying, it looked like a bottle of lighter fluid or gasoline to start the fire out there diesel. as well. It's diesel. It's diesel? Yeah, I saw him take the diesel can and put it in the spray thing. Okay. Who is Mr. Ramos? Mm. Huh? Not here. He's, he's, no, a, prop he's a property owner. Property owner. Property he's owner. A, how long has he owned the property? Do we have? No, two, two, two August. years. It'll be two in August. Okay. All right. So, so, question. Yeah. so back to Mr. Stahl here. Yes. Mr. Stahl, you got the podium. Well, thank you. And I'm, you know, my biggest concern is is that I believe there are some wetlands there, as as was proposed on the map. Dan Sullivan, who sold us our property, had mentioned that, you know, the wetlands came out to almost where my property was. Um, so seeing all of the, I mean, they're they're basically cutting everything down, and putting dirty fill in there. And there's a bobcat sitting there right now, just sitting there. Um, not to mention all the trucks and the buildings they've put in. And I'm just wondering if they've used any permits, pulled any permits, have, you know, uh, what else have they violated? But it's, it's, a, it's a lack of consideration for the entire area. Okay. That's all I have to all share. Right, thank you. Any questions for me? Uh, well, not yet, but we may have questions from the commission. John, do you want to say something? Is this a building department situation? Oh, I'm sure they're probably. It sounds like it's a town hall situation. Hit them all. I think it's a town hall no, situation. No, before it gets into the zoning to begin with. A zoning. Well, we have our you know we all have our wetlands jurisdiction right. and enforcement, so we have jurisdiction, but, but there's multiple seems we're issues. We're getting a lot of building department issues. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I mean, we try to focus obviously our our concern yep, on I, the wetlands. I will. But okay. we understand some background color that kind of what's going on too. It, it's helpful. Yeah, and, and and John, I mean, I think it's a joint thing on the town boards. I mean, there's a wetland piece, there's a building department piece, there's a health department piece. If you think about it, the air quality part. But you're right. I mean, we want to try to focus, uh, you know, the the yeah. comments on the, the wetlands, the water, you know, the the, the issues. We're primarily, um, you know, mandated to. Control. But anyway, over to you, sir, again. So five more, uh, Phil Petchik, 5 Moore Street in Challenge Street. Um, and, and so I would just wanted to clarify, I think, a couple of things that, that people brought up, right? The trucks that are out there, there's plows out there, which means all hydraulic equipment in the plows. I don't know how many people are familiar with them, but they operate on hydraulics. Um, sanders out there. So even if they're washed, they still have a lot of sand and stuff. They're parked under, you know, some tarps that are at the edge of the wetlands kind of thing. Um, one of the trailers that, that Carrie mentioned, one of them is a dump trailer, so it's hydraulic as well. Um, so there's a lot of that that's, that's going on out there that's a concern. Um, at one point in time, and I think that was last year, you could actually see the um, fill that they had put in. It was actually sort of, you could see the oils on the water in the wetlands area for a little while. <clears throat> and I think you guys had sent somebody out to clean it up, or somebody had sent somebody out to clean it up at one point. No. No, not us. It's new to us. I don't know. They put it in and they pulled it back out at um, at one point. So, so Phil, just to clarify, you observed what you, one might call an oil sheen on the <clears throat> wetland. That was yeah last year when they and they pulled stuff back out. But I've got pictures of their trailers that are filled with trash that are you know this trash dumped all over the ground out there like they dumped the dump trailer and that's what they're using for fill, um, and another one that's completely full. Um, you know, it's a hydraulic one as well. So. And, and excuse me, when you say uh, trash, do you mean like stumps and rocks and vegetation like debris, or do you mean like like bobcat tracks and bobcat tires? Right, but when I you say of it. Were, no, but when you say trash was dumped in the wetland, yeah. do you have any? Could you since you're close, could you tell? Here you go. I walk right up to it. Sorry, I want to bring this around to you guys. Shoot. Well, make sure you get it. You know, if you get those pictures over to our agent, that's really good. Okay. Yeah, that's. I don't know quite how to get them off my phone and send them, but oh. 
and there's a whole long. I don't know how much like yeah. if, 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 right. at all. But you know what the materials the were there? I mean, Don, um, I, I would expect up there in that truck. Someone right? would have contacted him. Truck, I'll ask him. Oh, is that like a is that like a plastic bag? That's a dump trailer with you trash. Really got to stop. Oh, and all that first. stuff went in. Yeah. Oh, so it's trash. Yeah, this stuff is all there too. If it's something that requires their approval. Yeah, I mean that's that's another agency even besides the town okay well i don't know like figure conservation and yeah well it's kind of lands i, I know it's like local state and federal that have different jurisdiction no yeah, right right. i know we used to live there okay i don't know that's no, that, that's gonna be good to get those pictures over to age someone will help you out to get it over to age but it's all of the documentation you start with the building yeah and i've got a whole bunch of that zoning violation that's what you're saying yeah well that might be true but why would we why would we not well it's not there all right that might be true all right, well, this was helpful getting, you know, the neighbor kind of input for us. And then what we're going to do now is, um, yeah, come on up to the mic. Uh, let's just, uh, uh, folks, let's just give this gentleman, uh, Peter, we want to give this gentleman at the mic now a chance to. Uh, Hi, my name is Michael Longo. I'm 31 Brickkiln Road. I'm directly next door to yeah. uh, Johnny Ramos. Um, this, um, the, the damage has been done. You know, he's already dumped and, and, and taken everything out and, and, you know, basically ruined what was a, a nice, you know, natural habitat. Um, but not just that, like, the, the health concern that I have for myself is uh, I'm recently um, stage four cancer survivor, and I have zero immune system. So I cannot really be, um, you know, exposed to, sure. you know, stuff like this. Um, with that being said, you know, I've talked to John, Johnny, and... Um, you know, he just he just waves me off and, and wants nothing to do with me, um, and it just seems like he's doing whatever he wants. And you know, I, I've seen I saw who went out there yesterday. Was it you that went out there yesterday, or and perhaps our agent? Were you out there? I, I, saw, I, saw I was you out there yesterday. Yeah, I saw you out there with, with, with the green hat on. And, yes, you know, I saw it. Yes. And I did see the flags that just appeared out of nowhere. I thought it was Johnny that put those up because they're right on the. The, you know where he cut. You know I didn't see anything that was any closer than where he cut. Oh, oh he went into the wetlands a little ways. Yeah, um, but you know, Mike, and I understand that there's other stuff like building the apartment and all that stuff that has to, you know, that we have to pursue and stuff for what he's doing. But as far as the, you know, I'm concerned about the damage that has been done, and like, is he going to have to replicate what he destroyed? You know, is he going to have to, you know, put stuff back that he ripped out? Um, you know, is it or is it just kind of going to be like this guy does whatever he wants and, and I mean it doesn't sound like a lot of people f from the, t uh, the offices in Chelmsford make it out to East Chelmsford too often um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I knew who Marty Spaulding was yeah uh, <laughs> we, we, did, we did that name resonated with a number of us on the commission so we, we've been out there uh, in the past uh, and we'll be out there again right. well thanks for the input yep. and again uh, hopefully you know Appreciate your health concerns. Right, wish you thank good luck you. with that. Chris, I had a question. Yeah, Bill. Uh, David, you went out there yesterday. Yes. You said they pulled stuff out of the wetlands already. Or well, stuff that stuff that they had put in. Because uh, you told them to. Uh, what's, what's yes, yes. I, I, in the enforcement order that I gave them, told them that they need to get all of this, all of the fill out of the wetlands for the generic okay. name part. But now, he's still dumping stuff down there. Um, well, well, he, he certainly shouldn't be. Um, and now, now, it, now it looked from what I saw yesterday. What, what's that? I said from what I've heard tonight, he's not going to listen to us. Uh, well, I mean, we we just for the general input of the folks in the audience, we we issue an enforcement order. It's a legally binding order. Uh, it's two, primarily two components: cease and desist. The uh, the person's got to cease from violating the wetlands laws. And they're not only the town wetlands laws, but they're also the state of Massachusetts wetlands laws. So it's a cease and desist. Number two, there's a restoration component. They need to restore what they've damaged and get it back to as good a condition as it was b before. So there's a restoration component as well, too. What about the cleanup component? And that's, that's an aspect as well, too. So they have a legal responsibility. We're your local conservation board. We have local jurisdiction. Um, but there's, there's also jurisdiction from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, from the Mass DEP. So they, they're involved as well, too. And we report ultimately to them. They'll get a copy of the enforcement orders we issue. So it's not just us, as well as the fact that the town has a legal department and legal counsel, too. So we have resources to ensure that 
you know, people that violate these laws are, at the end of the day, held accountable. Sometimes these things go smoothly. We have a lot of cooperation from the violator, um, you know, but sometimes they don't go as, as smooth. They get, they're painful and they can drag out into the courts and all that. But we hope to get these things resolved as quickly as we can. That's just a quick overview of kind of how it works. The first step really is our agent goes out, he issues the enforcement order, gives him a cease and desist on the spot. And so, and that, that's that. Then he comes back to us, the full commission. He reports to us, asks us to ratify his actions, which will soon take a vote to ratify what he's done out in the field. And then that gets communicated. And then a copy of the enforcement order is gonna to go to Commonwealth of Massachusetts as well. And then we're gonna follow this thing in this public hearing process until it gets resolved at the end of the day. So that's kind of how we're going to do it. Yes. We get a site visit in there. And we can do a perhaps. site visit as well too. What so. if he's, what if he's just like so tomorrow? Say a truck shows up and starts dumping dirt again. Um, you know, is there anything I can do to just like stop it? Call well, him. let, let the David agent know. Me. Yeah. Call David. Tell so him. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. David's a guy. Agent, he's yeah. our agent. He's got the authority to go out there, hit him with cease and desist. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we could go to court and get like legal injunctions and do a lot of stuff to make this stop from happening. But it starts with our agent, he's our guy. He's got legal, the legal authority to get out there and stop it. And, and we got a really good agent. This man's got 30 years experience, he's good, believe me. Thank you. Yes. And, and just to underscore something that you said, Chris, which is a challenge for this board, but um, off the top of my head, it strikes me that there's probably a number of state regulations, dumping uh, and more, that are, in question here that this board does not have, as I understand it, the authority to enforce. We're here to enforce the Wetland Protection Act, which covers some of this stuff, but there's some other things going on that, that you know, are not, is not our legal responsibility to, so you might think about that. Chris. Let me say a couple yeah, David, comments? What <clears throat> point does DEP get involved? Um, there, there's a couple potential ways they could. The commission could ask them to. Okay. Or, or, or if I want to do that right away. Okay. My experience has been what they did out at Parley's Farm, mm -hmm. where they took it away from us because we weren't acting fast enough. Well, you don't. Uh, well, it, it, I'm not sure we want them to take it away from us. I think. Well, we I didn't think, either. But I, I, but I think but to they request got their assistance, they got something done. Get, mm -hmm. get them involved. S second point I'd like to make is, I think this board and I will make a motion to that effect later on. We sh what I've heard tonight, there's at least half of four, four or five departments in the town that should be involved in this problem. Board of Health should be involved in this problem due to this gentleman who has smokes, yeah. uh, the stage four cancer thing. Uh, the, the building department apparently should be involved because there's been some construction on the site. Did Plus, it, if it you're running a business out of there. All of those organizations report to one person, the Director of Community Development. We should request Evan Belansky, the Director of Community Development, to call all of these departments together tomorrow, or as soon as he can, find to get every single possible complaint that's been raised in one source, and then act as a town, not act as individual commissions or departments to address this issue. Okay. Well, a building department doesn't report to Evan, but I can, I can certainly speak to, they sit to, next to both of them. Right. <laughs> Okay. I, I think that's a really good point because it's very impactful if we, or it can be more and the, impactful. The, the, the third point I would like to make, which is informational, um, this site is at the far end of an 11 acre parcel that's owned by one family that's all wetlands. There are 11 or 12 houses around from Shed Lane through Moore Street that abut wetlands, and each one of those houses has a small portion of wetlands in their property. Uh, we've had a number of instances over the past with violations from homeowners, whether it's, whether it's building a pool, whether it's fighting another neighbor as to who's doing what to whose property. So we're well aware of it, and it is a very nice wetland area. I would guess in the aggregate it's got to be 15 to 20 acres of yeah. wetlands. Yeah. So we need to make sure that this does not get out of hand. Absolutely. That's all I think. 
Ms. Conway, you're back at the podium. Thank you. What would David, you I just wanted to say thank you for um, mentioning that all these committees should come together. One of the frustrations over the last two years is, well, we've been trying to be good neighbors because um, we've never had issues like this in our neighborhood. Actually, it's gotten all of us closer in the end, uh, the rest of us. But um, we have sent emails to various <laughs> um, parts of town hall and that has been one of the frustrations so, is that, so what kind of a response if any have you received um not much i know mike did call a uh, board of health because when it was raining some of the the um the dirt that he left or the fill that he put down was coming in like green into mike's lawn um so there was concerns about that i know my husband sean has sent uh sent an email i think to zoning um after and, looking at the bylaws of zoning and what was the, the what was that response i don't believe that there was a re oh that they would look into it and you sent to jose as well um so and, and yeah he, and he hasn't replied I've also he, i got a reply jose. from him that said he would it's always we'll look into it oh and and and, and nothing since then wow let's and get brian richards, richards to look into it and get brian richards they were going to check the zoning for that area there was something about maybe somebody, somebody gave somebody a waiver to be able to have a business there that i can't imagine why yeah it's not zoned for business of heard about it, but so one of the one of the things that we can do is we have a select person who um is a liaison to this conservation commission so we'll be sure i'll be sure as chairman to reach out to her and let her know what transpired in the meeting tonight and uh, ask for her assistance as well. But you, you're well aware there's a public hearing session at the beginning no. of every selectman. We we have really been trying to just be good neighbors. That's and being deal with a good it. neighbor. But um, elevating it to somebody who can do something yeah. about it is being a good neighbor. We're we're at the point where it's gone too far. I mean, I think the best thing that happened is they put up a, a fence between our summer's a slow season. Properties. Get before them at their next yeah. hearing. All right. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, let's see. So. One thing we need to do tonight is have a vote on, on ratifying the enforcement order that, that David. Can we make it any tougher than you made it, David? Uh, sure. You could. What, what, what else? What would you? What, well, you what could. What are some options? You you could um, require um, a larger uh, restoration of the buffer zone. You could you could require a restoration of the entire buffer zone. Do we even have a a plan with the flags on it to show? Yes. Yep. Um, I, I think we the should flags make are gone, right? Huh? No, no, they've. No, they have to be reflagged. They've, they've. Uh, no, the the flags have been restored, and I believe in the oh, enforcement yeah. order. Um, I actually required that. Yeah, stake the location of the 100 foot buffer zone, and then remove all fill, except soil, cut trees, etc., from wetlands and 25 foot no disturb setback. Place all remove fill outside <coughs> the 100 foot buffer zone or off site. Um, so, so I, um, the restoration plan I required was for the 25 of altered wetlands and 25 foot no disturb setback, but you could certainly expand that outside the 25 foot no I, disturb I would setback. like the enforcement order to be as tough as it can be based on what I've heard this evening, mm -hmm. because we know this is going to be a fairly long drawn out process and we're going to get stonewalled based on what I've heard so I'd like to make the enforcement order as difficult as possible well then then that would be the 100 foot buffer zone um, but 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 that would that they've already started putting in a retaining wall um, in in the buffer zone um, so that's gonna be some major work they're gonna have to do that's all right with me we can always negotiate off of it mm -hmm. right and, and then the other thing is uh, well, this is, gets into planning board perhaps, but stormwater permit, it is a change of use from the previous it's, use, right? No, it's not a change Let, of use. Let's see it's it's be. Well, but, but, but not in the commission's jurisdiction. Yeah. But uh, I think to let's, Dave's point here, we want to focus on our wetlands. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's take care of the enforcement order first. Yeah. Then I'm going to move to get the director of community development involved, but that's a separate issue. Let's get the enforcement order taken care of first. So, so it sounds like we need the uh, vote to ratify the enforcement order issued. As amended. And, and amended that basically we want a restoration plan that covers all of the disturbed area within the buffer zone. Okay. All right. So if we could have somebody make that motion. I so move. Dave on the motion. Second. Uh, Carl on the second. 
Any discussion before yeah. we vote? At what point do we bring Chelsea police in to enforce our enforcement order? Can we? Uh, well, um, I, I think that would only be necessary necessary if they're continuing to do work um, out on the site. Um, so tomorrow they're continuing to work after we voted tonight? Um, well, on, 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 only only if they abide by the enforcement order, and in particular only if they're just continuing to remove the fill from the wetlands and so the buffer you, zone. Because I think you're going to need some some muscle, to be quite honest with you. Um, okay, that's I mean, well, I'll certainly keep that in mind. But I but I think where where the commission probably will need the most help is with the town council. Right, is going to right. court. Exactly. Um, you you said they're, they're moving material and stuff out of there, but isn't there a cease and desist on the property? Um, yes, but 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 there but the um, they can't they can't do any, they can't do anything else except remove the stuff. But you said they're they building the wall and the buffer. Oh, they've been yes. moving that, the stumps and the trees that he cut down. That's all I've ever seen leaves. No, no dirt or... Well, well he, ha he, has, he, has, he has removed some. Um, there's still more to do. There's no doubt about that. Uh, what's um, this retaining wall again? Th that's not something he's been permitted to do, right? Uh, not by the commission. I don't think it needs anything from the building department. But, yeah, it is, it is a Within little ways... Within our jurisdiction, right? It, it, is, it is a little ways into the buffer zone. Um, well, let me see. I'll... Uh, Bring the plant. So, so the re, so the retaining wall is um, is up in this location. Okay. How many trees we've got? Oh, well, probably a lot. I mean, you see, if you look at the plan, you'll see the tree line, the pre-existing tree line. So that apparently was all forested mm -hmm. when this plan was created. Like old growth trees. You just build that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's take them one at a time here. We got a series of steps. So we're we're focusing on the enforcement order now. Yeah, so if we we have the motion, we have a second on it. So let's take a vote in favor of ratifying the enforcement order. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, unanimous. All right. So we voted to um, ratify the enforcement order as amended. So we had a couple other action steps that we were discussing. Yeah, I, I would like. Okay. I I move that we request. The Director of Community Development to call a meeting of Conservation, Board of Health, Building Department. Building Department. Did we hear anybody else? Health Zone, Zoning Planning Health. Board. No, not the Planning Board. Well, That's I know fi like fire. That. The Fire Department has been involved because of the, the burning. Okay. Yeah, Fire Department. So there's four. Let's start with this. No, because they haven't been called in yet. Did you say the police? They haven't been called. Police. They got called for noise. We have. We have called. Yeah. I want to get the meeting. I don't want to have so many people invited that they can't hold the right. meeting. So that's four. Okay. To call those four departments to discuss. What's the number? Thirty-five Brick Kiln Road and the violations that have occurred and that continue to occur under an enforcement order issued by the Conservation Commission. Okay. Zoning also possibly? Well, that's, that's, that's the building. That, that's okay. building. Um, I don't think I want stuff taken out of there. Did you want say, that's not what I said. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking... I'm, what, what He's doing it in violation of the enforcement order. Well, well but, but the enforcement order is, is actually ordering him to take the fill out of the wetlands. The stuff that he put in yeah, the Yeah, we want that out of there. Right. We want that stuff yeah, out. That's what right. that's got to come out, man. Yeah, he, right. he's but, but he has no guidelines. He can do anything he wants. He, drive with, he wants to drive with a machine, he drives with a machine. You know what I mean? It's just like kind of leaves an open end. Unsupervised, in other words. Well, I mean, I, I, I am, you know, overseeing it. Yeah, um, I'm yeah but that, to... it, it shouldn't fall on you, though. Yeah, sure it does. Should. It's enforcement. Sure it it's under us and him. Yeah. All right. So, right. I mean, maybe, they, maybe his, uh, his participation should be more than... What he has today, I mean, they but have. You're, but you're right, David. He's the type that was uh, would would drive a, a tractor in there to pull stuff out, right? Um, well, I'll make sure he doesn't do that. I know I'm that. on TV, but I'm I'll, and I'll, I don't know the guy, but I still think he would. Okay, well, I'll make sure that I emphasize. <laughs> All right, so not so do we that. have Dave's made a request that we that 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 our agent. You know, meeting together with these key departments to deal with these issues. I mean, I'll I'll try to do that, but it might 
have more force and effect if it goes through the town manager's office. And that might be a good way to escalate it up to our town manager's office, honestly. Dave, what do you think? I, think I just want to go chain of command and start with Evan. If he doesn't respond, then I'd go to the town manager. Give Evan a chance to respond because we do report to him, right? Well, I do. Yeah, yes. I mean, conservation. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I uh, Okay. Well, I'll, but see I do what, think I'll see what I can do. I would escalate it up to town manager through Evan because I think the higher up it goes, the better. I want to see what you're getting done. Exactly. Um, so that was one action step. Uh, I'm going to reach out to our select person liaison, so and communicate, make well, sure that she's aware we, of these why issues. Why don't we vote on my and then we'll make oh yeah yeah let's another yeah, motion to yeah. bring it up with yeah right so um, so um, Dave made a motion second seconded by Bill. All those in favor of that motion? Aye. I Aye. am. So, okay, so we have that direction for to proceed, yeah. um, and then I'm going to touch base with our select okay, person let me liaison. Do it as a motion. Okay. I, I move that we that we request the chairman of the Conservation Commission to discuss, what's the number? 35. 35, 35. Brick Hill Road with the select board's conservation liaison, who is Virginia, Virginia. Virginia Timmons. Virginia Timmons. Okay, so motion by Dave. Second. Second by, again. Sorry. Uh, Bill. Bill in the second. We got a squabble in the second. Bill in the yeah. second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Uh, unanimous. All right. So okay. we've got that step. Uh, we got we got the issue with getting like DEP, mass DEP involved. Uh, I think it would be good for you to reach out to I will. at least uh, at least let them know what's going on. Well, um, your key contact out. There. I'll um, you know I, as you pointed out earlier, uh, Chris, that uh, I need to send them the enforcement orders. Yep. Which right. I, I will do uh, tomorrow, see it. and you know, ask them and just say to them, you know, whatever assistance they can provide the commission right. in this matter would be. Don't great they great see great. the enforcement order as a matter of course? Yes, they're, yeah. they're like an NOI. Yes, yeah. Yeah. but but in this case, it's up to the commission, yeah. and me, to provide them with. Right, but but we don't want to rely on the the fact that they see the order. You want to have a. One to one no, no, conversation. No, right. right. I want to be a we'll, little bit more proactive. The town will take care of it until DEP says they need to be involved. On, right. uh, on the other hand, again, I wouldn't want it to turn it over to DEP no. No. and relinquish, we'll relinquish all control. When they so. took that one away from us before, do you know we never were told what the resolution was by the state? Uh, that's typical. I know. Uh, it. That's typical. And, you know, you, you try to go to the attorney general to get information, and you just can't. So that's we don't rather, want that to that's happen. That's why I'd in this rather case. us do it with our own. And yes. town council, town council can start throwing some money around too. Yeah. So, 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 what part of DEP do we want to reach out to? Because you got some solid waste issues. No. You've got no. Just no, no, just no. Wetlands. He's going to go to his regional kind of coordinator. Be, 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 be the circuit rider. Circuit rider. He goes to circuit rider. They circuit decide. Rider. They decide. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. And then they can, you know, escalate internally as needed. Yeah. So you're going to do that. And then what else we got going on? Um, that's a lot. I mean, at some point we're going to need town council to be aware of what's going on. But we would, if we need town council assistance, we then that would be escalated up through town manager to get the approval on that. So I think that will that'll flow out of the, the meeting of having multiple boards. Are the rest of your neighbors aware of this too? All the way, no, all, be more here. all the way around. I mean, all the way over to Shed Lane. The more people in your neighborhood that know about it that can scream a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a picture of, uh, of the trees that were taken down. Yeah, that's all good. We you you know, Get those into our agent. He's going to build a file on this whole thing. I just have a question. Like you guys said, if he starts something again tomorrow, like... Just let us know. Contact David. Agent. Yes. Contact David. Yes. The agent. David. He's our agent. Eyes and ears. What's in the yeah. wetlands. What's that? If he does stuff in the wetlands. Yeah, it's at 978-250-5231, and then it's like prompt number two gets you to. 250-5231? Yes, and then it's number two gets you to the agent. But, but, but I mean, it's really only if he's, yeah, dumping more stuff there or he's cutting more trees. Doing what stuff he, in the wetlands. What if he's grabbing the bobcat down there and pushing stuff around? Like that's what he was doing. Well, he's, again, he's, he's allowed to haul it out. He's allowed to haul it back, um, but I'll. Um, it was an all stop. Like you can't, you can't do anything. No, right. he's been or he's been ordered to clean it up. Oh, right. I mean, but like right. He, the stuff he dumped is. He's not taking any of that out. Like it, it, he just pushed it into the. 
Yeah, that's what we want out of there. It's the stuff you dumped in there. Phil, it's got to come out. Where's all that stuff going? Right. It's somebody else's backyard. Right. And then, and then, just to be sure, David, you saw the photograph of the truck backed up to the wetlands with obviously trash in the truck. Yeah. Now I have, I, I, I have, yeah, I have seen a, mer a fair amount of trash out there. Um, you know, according to the the property owner, it was put there before he bought the property. Yeah. You know, okay. yeah. Sure. Yeah. But I but I told him he's got to get it out of there anyway. So. Uh, so anyway, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of like um, as you can see, we welcome public input here. We like to listen to the people, you know, and um, so it's all open. What was that, Dave? So we can blame COVID. Yeah, yeah, we can blame COVID. But uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to continue this on, you know, through the through our public process. So we'll we'll this will be on the agenda in two weeks at our next meeting. We meet every two weeks. Second, was it second or fourth? Second Tuesday. and fourth. Second and fourth Tuesday. Tuesday. You know, we're a volunteer board, so we meet our agent. He's our full time employee. Works for the town. Supports us. So we'll be back again on this matter, and we'll keep. But if you see something happening out there that's, you know, dramatic, he's, he's the man, he's the agent, call him, email him, let him know. Um, and again, he's, uh, so that's what we're going to do. And we're uh, we'll take it step by step. Can I ask just one more Yeah, question? sure, come on up. We're trying to record all this. Maybe David can answer this one. Um, all, this, all the fill that was added behind that retaining wall, is that all stuff that he's supposed to be getting out too? Or how does that sit? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, at least, uh, at least, uh, uh, if 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 he takes out the um, retaining wall and then, uh, you know, what's in back of it collapses, you know, then he'll have to remove all of that as well. Well, because all of that was filled too. It used to be you much lower as the. Standing the two yards next to him, you can see both yards no. drop down like three or four. An, an engineer can determine His what the original. Continues height was there right I just didn't know if that was required for, or was okay. going to be required. that'll be up to him to f have an engineer find out what was there where original grade yeah and was. the Commission's jurisdiction only extends to the hundred feet away mm -hmm. okay so so no the Commission can't require remove anything that's outside that distance okay I think it might be inside but I'm not positive I think the, uh, some of the the retaining wall right. is at least partially <clears throat> yeah. okay that's what I thought so, Let me ask a question. Right. we need a plan uh, Dave you have something can, can we, as chair and a lawyer, can we publish enforcement orders on our web page? Well, they're public information. Yeah, I don't see yeah. why not. Why don't we? Why don't we let the people know who in town has enforcement orders against them? Okay. Well, yeah. We've got to make sure we take them down when they Wall comply. <laughs> you know. Yeah, certainly a policy of the commission. And Scarlet, yeah. <laughs> Does, do, do any of you guys have a problem with that? I don't no, have do a problem you? with that. It's a wall of shame. Yeah. Okay, then I move that the Conservation Commission publish on its website all issued enforcement orders until they are removed or complied with. You know, and I think, Dave, as long as we're consistent, you know, we don't pick on one right. versus right. another, yeah, we're consistent right. and fair. Yeah. And we so, got to remember to take them down, too. Do you have any I mean, that's, that? No. No, I don't. I All right. So, uh, by done? Dave, second well, over here by Peter. Easily done for you. Yes. In favor? Yeah, I, I, I know Aye. how to do that now. Unanimous. Yeah. All right. Why not? Okay. So, we'll see you folks in a couple weeks. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. coming. Thank Thanks you. for uh, waiting. I was amazed at some of the yeah, new service. service. Well, you bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys all volunteer. This is yeah, I we're volunteers. <laughs> well, we all love this town. We all brought our kids up here. That's right. That's right. We want to see it stay. Yeah. So, thank you. That's right. All right. Hey, we haven't had a lively one like that in a while. Yeah. I say, I bet you this guy's not from Jones. Uh, I bet you he's feeling new in town. Yeah. Have right. you ever heard of him as a contractor? Uh, I never have. There, there you go. There's, there's the words. But John, you ever heard of him as a contractor? No. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, land management update over to Carl. Land management update for the evening. Um, we. The CR um, is moving along still. We get some info from 
Mr. Alfin, who is going to be making some what he considers to be very reasonable and small changes and get, get a draft to us. Without our approval. Who's that? He can get a draft to us so that he can review, so that we can review that. So that was a couple of days ago. I think it was Thursday we get that notice. So we'll see that review uh, or see that those changes in a draft hopefully this week and um, get to review it <clears> and hopefully we'll be done. Um, but we'll see. Um, as we chatted about earlier, the trails at Warren Pole were cut um, Sunday. Um, they needed it, and they look good. They're they're in much better shape today. And um, the only other thing I have, a couple of things. One is Russell Mill, um, the garden shed that's in the front, um, up by the on the front of the property. Um, apparently, um, Phil is looking to have that roof replaced. Um, there's. Uh, some volunteers willing to do it. I don't see any issue with having that done. Anybody? Shed? It's the white shed right in the front of the property. Oh, right in, next near to the Harvey's park. property? Yep, yep, yep. yep. And I, apparently it's the, the roof's not in great shape. So to me it's like great. What is he using that for? Storing equipment. So is he, lawn, take, is he taking lawn. care of that site? Yeah. Really? Yeah, for that front part, yeah. But I think the, um, uh, I think the mountain biking group is going to help do the roof. So... Huh. I, I think I think we're all. I'm assuming we're all good with that. You know, yeah. this is all fine. Yeah, good. It's not going to cost money. I think the shingles are. Somebody's got shingles, so just more or less letting you know that that's going to happen. Um, last week, um, I was at the master plan implementation committee. You, you're welcome. I I, I went <laughs> to the <laughs> meeting, <you. laughs> and um, we up, did our update it's on nice having a representative that attends those meetings now, isn't natural it? Natural <laughs> resources uh, last week, and um, so the inputs you guys gave me were helpful. And um, Christine was there because actually the reality is the majority of the inputs there are, are DPW type resources. But it was fine. There was some good discussion, um, but it was a good update and. Um, and the only other thing is, um, as Peter knows and David knows, we are um, working with Evan to, Evan's pushing with NEMCOG to do an update to the open space and rec plan and looking for some funding, which seems like from the email tra traffic, I think if I understood it, it looks like that should be pretty straightforward. And Yeah, there's a super simple proposal a bunch of us have been working on with Evan that goes into the state uh, a week from Friday, I think. No, this Friday. This whatever. Friday. To fund NIMCOG for some money to help with the plan, yeah. So the process wouldn't start until for a that's while, approved, yeah. A couple of months or whatever, but that would be an update that likely, based on what I read, would be a year from now that it would be ish, that Done. it would be completed. So anyway, so that would happen, and that's that. That would be on time for when we should be having a new a new release, a new a new plan. And then the last thing is June third, Saturday is uh, a week from this Saturday is our next concom walk um, the three sites that we have left are the red wing farm lime quarry and thanksgiving forest i'd like to actually go to red wing farm if that works for everybody um, unless somebody has some other site but um i've been, 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 been there in a long time i did have a comment from somebody uh i forget who it was somebody from uh, the cpc meeting was it judy Somebody said the the split rail fence there is in really tough shape. So among other things, we can take a look at that and uh, see that site and uh, check it out. So if that works, um, nine o'clock on January third, uh, uh, June third, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. June third, um, we'll hit Red Wing Farm. Very good. O open to other ideas, but I think that makes as good a sense as any. Very good. Okay, that's it. Thanks. All right. Can I, can I add one quick thing yeah, on land management? Yeah. Um, I know it's late. We probably want to break. We'll pick this up later. Um, Carl, I'm curious if Christine mentioned this, but uh, Christine Clancy came to the, the, the tree co last tree committee meeting, and she said, and I'm paraphrasing, so apologies if, if you're listening or see this, but something to the fact that she had about 100 trees oh. from National Grid. 71, I think. Yeah, well, it's probably yeah. 70. She had 100 and didn't have a home for them all. So, Carl, I, we can talk offline. But uh, my tree expert tells me a shrub is the same as a tree. Grid's been spending, a, you know, the, you saw those trees on the common. Those are paid for by grid. They're not cheap. You buy a lot of shrubs, stick them along some stream bed somewhere. 
So just an idea, we could perhaps talk offline. Um, I do think, Chris, I had one other thing. I do think, Christine, I don't know what her plans are, but I think there's something in the town bylaw, David, a, 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 a resident homeowner can uh, request a tree be planted in their yard. And she was also trying to figure out if there's some way to get that kind of a program rolling. But it's that one-to-one -one replacement when grid takes trees. I think it came out of this commission's recommendation for her to take a look at Crooked Spring. I don't know. I'm not sure of the details, but I know she's been working with grid uh, on trees in general. Uh, so I'll throw know, that Peter, idea. It, does she actually have the trees, or does she have only a commitment? Commitment to get them from. Can we audit trees? Yeah. What What happened is we we set we set this up. Well, we didn't set it up. DPW has been doing this, but um, the tree committee has been working very well with Christine to identify tree species and actually pick the stock from most of it came from Weston Nursery and make sure they're not sending you know they're sending good stuff and working closely with DPW staff thank you Christine tree committee has been to make sure they're planted properly because as you all know trees are pretty sensitive to how deep they are and they have to be watered. So apparently the survival rate of a lot of trees that have been planted in town hasn't been great because of right. not planting right or not watering them. And once again, I have to give a shout out to Christine. I've told her this a number of times. She's got her DPW crew all in on learning more from the tree committee on the best way to plant trees, at least on the common property. So there's a cool thing going on. And there is an opportunity if we wanted to do this just a thought is is work with with costs and DPW and the tree expert on the committee and anyone else for some sort of planting program I don't know when and of course I don't know exactly what should be planted where and maybe that's a question for bigger brains but I want to throw that out there and it's just an idea that um, we might want to jump on starting I like the idea that shrubs are considered trees because they're both woody stocky um, and benefit it's from an arborist with yeah. not me arborist with 50 years experience when I asked the question yeah. so there's a thought you know and how does National Grid end up with 42 trees without anybody knowing about it cut down trees that are owed to the town of Jones you know they cut a lot at the school didn't they yeah, it's wherever they're it's they wherever they're clearing, over it's there. wherever they're clearing an easement, right? Right. I think the issue is more that they're cutting them, notifying us, and we can't keep up with where to replace well, them. Well, that's, that's, that's still a fair question. Our, yeah. Well, and I and I think there's there's a, an issue there that's very much of interest to the commission. My understanding from Christine is that her approval is required um, as a tree warden yeah. um, for when shade trees are taken down. That's one a public shade trees. Public shade trees, which means they're in the the town right of way, road right of way. But but also, whenever trees are taken down on town owned property, now um, that was not done. Of course, this was before her time, but that was not done um, when National Grid did all that cutting in the easement in their easement off of Riverneck Road. Um, so that's that's something that I that I have indicated to her that in the future that even if it's on conservation land even even if it's within an easement that you know she needs to approve that cutting and presumably at that point she would get the commission involved I don't again I don't think that it's anything the commission can stop yeah but well, why not suggest that we stop right but at least but at least we'll know about it and hopefully prevent disasters like right. there was and up in the easement on River off of Neck. Yeah, and, and I know it's getting late, but it's a little bit complicated because if it's a public shade tree, like along the road, the DPW is required and just recently started doing this to issue a public notice, hold a public hearing. Public hearing, yes. But it's advertised in the Lowell Sun. Right. So I don't know how you're supposed to know about it. And I've been to at least one of those. <laughs> yeah. And and yeah. and a member of the public came and said, don't cut down all the trees in front of my house and grid, hey, there was a compromise reached. That's why we have trouble posting our meetings. That's right. So, but I, I would suggest that uh, maybe there's an action item here, a couple of different things we could address Well, Well, I, I, I think that's a really good example. I think the regulations that administer the, the tree bylaw could, could be revised to require posting on the town website. That's certainly eminently doable. Right, and I think that from what I understand, that's a problem too, because almost every time I ask somebody if they monitor the town website for much of anything, they say no. 
<laughs> so anyway, anyway, there's a whole conversation there. Yeah, yeah. But let's start with the trees that right. she's looking at a home for, Carl. And if we have some interest to consider possibly planting on our open space somewhere. Yeah, good idea. All right, do you want me to, through the tree committee function, do you want sure. me to send a note around to Christine just saying we're interested in a conversation? Yes, perfect. And see what, and at least perfect. get our place in the queue? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. All right, good. All right, so back on the agenda. We've got uh, agent's report, update on 221 Littleton Road. Uh, okay, so <laughs> unfortunately this looks like it might be another one that's being kind of slow walked. Um, so I've, I um, had another conversation with the owner's attorney um, subsequent to uh, Is this the our oil last trucks. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think I mentioned at the last meeting that I had uh, a conversation with her. Um, I thought that we left it so that she would contact the property owner's engineer. Apparently, the engineer has prepared a site plan and everything. Um, so I thought that's how we we left it um, after our first conversation. And I didn't hear anything at all. Called the attorney again a few days ago, and basically there was nothing new to report. I said, "Well, you know, please, please, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk to the engineer. Ideally, I'd like to meet her on site." Um, so, I think the attorney said she would do that. Uh, the attorney has also promised to be here at the June 13th meeting. That's, of course, that's three weeks away. Um, you know, again, I try, <laughs> but. Um, well, what point do you turn over to town council? Um, well, that's a good question. I don't think we're quite at that point yet. Um, to the it, 13th to show up. Um, the deal stiff does twice. Right. If she doesn't show up on the 13th, I think that's that's definitely an enforcement order, no doubt about it. Um, I'll uh, I'll pester her at least one you more know, time. You might want to. Yeah. I think you should draft, have a draft enforcement order ready okay. for our meeting on the 13th, and then if we don't like what happens on the 13th, we bang, an enforcement order. Okay. I so. think being as aggressive as we are to that one on Moore Street, yeah. Rick Young Road, there's no bite to it. Nobody really, no. they weren't afraid of the Conservation Commission. Right. But if you get some bite into it. They probably didn't even know about the Conservation Commission. Well, they, they did because they had a, they had a plan. So now what I, I didn't I didn't mention this earlier, but what the owner is claiming is that he came he came to town hall <laughs> and was told no problem. Well, he never spoke to me, so I'm not sure what happened. But uh, any in, anyway, um, so uh, okay, I'll uh, I'll I'll pester the attorney at least one. No chance time. those trucks are leaking, is there? I, they were not well, leaking two weeks ago. Well, Dave, Dave, the fuel trucks inspected every year yeah. okay by a by an appropriate there's a lot of companies that are parked right next to a lot bigger wetlands that are fuel trucks so it's the, like the fire department and if the property zoned for it then they're safe well um I, what, I, what i've been told is that the 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 tanks the oil tanks on the trucks are empty so that that it may very well be less of a concern though that but the stuff like that's you know oil and grease that's dripping from the engines i think that's a legitimate concern now now uh, again i've been told that what they're doing is allowed by right under zoning but but the way i look at it is still a change of use so oh, yeah so yeah. so i that's think that's another zoning thing so, so i think if there's a change in use of a property i think the commission potentially has the legal right to get involved um, you know, especially if it goes to a more in, intense use, which this is. Um, so, I mean, the the attorney has promised that they're going to cooperate with regard to right. the well, the commission's concerns. Now, I don't know if that goes so far as is if the commission requires the filing of a notice of intent to deal with you know stormwater. I don't know. Well, you know, we'll see. But I mean, as as you well know, the trucks are right next to the wetlands, and yeah. and I and I and there's certainly I I looked at the pavement. I mean, there's definitely a lot of grease and oil drippings on the pavement. Now I don't know that that's all just since this most recent use has started, but um, I, I I think it's a legitimate concern. Well, it's a change of use with the our favorite term uh, the 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 level. 
if I said that correctly, the higher pollutant loading. Yep. Yes. By, by virtue of it being trucks. Yep. I so right away when you start talking about stormwater and the regs, there's acknowledgement that that's a issue. Yep. And and there's in in orders con of conditions, there's a standard condition that says no storage of motorized vehicles within 100 feet of wetlands. Right. Yeah. All right, so June 13th, they're coming in, you're putting the pressure, um, edging up to pressure yep. on that one, and we'll be ready to do an enforcement order on the 13th if we're not happy with the way things are going. Okay. Uh, uh, next agenda item. Uh, there's an update on the 18-20 uh, Boston Road. So this one is very interesting. <laughs> So uh, you, you recall the commission issued an emergency certificate yeah. to um, for an emer uh, okay. a, a, an immediate Let's response. Let the record show that Peter has stepped out of this meeting Thank you. for the moment. Where is this? Um, this is at, at uh, 18 and 20 Boston Road. It's, lumber company. The lumber company? No. Well, it's no. it's 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 right Fine. next to 10 Summer Street, which is Harrington Liquors. Right, right next to that, and right next oh, to that. Oh, where they're right. digging, they're, they're digging the, the the oil tank. Right. Yes. Okay. Where where they did dig, dig the oil yeah. tank, but they had continued to see a sheen in the right. stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why they needed the commission's approval to do some more work. Yeah. So so they did. They they did that. They they went in and started digging, and they found a new source. A new source. Yeah. They found they found a pipe. They found a like a five or six inch <laughs> PVC um, at at the surface. Actually, it was underneath a pine tree. So so it had been there a while, but they, they found that pipe. Uh, they removed it, and um, and actually, if you look in the pipe, they actually saved it so I could look in it. If you look down at the bottom of the pipe, there's, there's a, a, um, a stain where almost certainly what had happened was that uh, from time to time there was petroleum that was dumped down that pipe and where, where it, it filled up the pipe to a certain level before it completely drained out and that's what formed the stain on the pipe. So, so and of course that, that's illegal. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, we don't know when that was done, but it was clearly done enough to not only leave this stain on the inside of the pipe, but they removed several yards of, you know, sat, you know, soil that was saturated with oil. Wow. Um, so uh, they, they sort of asked me if I knew anything about that. And I said, well, no, there's nothing in the records. Um, but uh, it's funny because uh, who's the guy that owns the strip mall where Adiyama is? Yeah, it's Win Stanley. It's Win Stanley it's, did a lot of work back there when that was that strip mall was rebuilt. Well, I, I think they extended the building, didn't they? No, I don't think. Yeah, they, they did. Is that the Ammo's a new building? No. Well, no, but I think they, they yeah, cut. That's, that's my understanding. They did stuff on. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, that could have been done when structural purity was built. Sure. Oh, this probably goes way well, back. Way well, back. It's, it's, way it's not that yeah. old. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you the look, tree has grown up. Over that's it. right. I mean, if if you if you look at the tree that grew up over it, it's probably pretty slow growing. It's probably forty years old anyway. Right. Um, now how now how long it was used? Um, so I, I think when, I think a lot Stanley's of Stanley's problem. Well, yeah, that's probably the bottom line. It is. <laughs> but don't quote me on this. And they may be looking for someone to sue. Um, that's it. Yeah, he can go after. Uh, but it's always the. It, no matter when it happened, it's also the current occupant's problem. Yeah. That's yeah. a scary thing when you buy a property. That's right. Yeah. But at, at least uh, there's no more sheen uh, on the water. Uh, un undoubtedly, uh, a lot uh, had escaped into the wetlands over the years. But at least moving forward, it looks it looks like that's been uh, good. corrected. Good. So, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. That's a good answer. That's a good story. At least it finishes with a better <laughs> ending. So we won one. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And it was, I'm glad it was discovered. Even Brooke has been happy. there forever. Yeah, it's too bad it had to take so long. <laughs> All right, so that's an uh, update on, uh, on that one. All right, good. Uh, so jumping ahead here, so Peter can come back and join us now, officially at 9.02. Boy, are you in a butter? It is an interested party. You own a piece of the property? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll the explain pipe. later. Yeah. The PVC yeah. Pipe. We, we don't want to go. I, I have no direct involvement. We don't want to go. Site 
Um, so we have minutes. We have uh, we have how many minutes. We got three minutes here. We've here. got April 25 oh, minutes. I, I, We've I, got I, the I, May 2nd yeah. abbreviated yeah. minutes of our working oh, session. Yeah, agreed. We've got the May 9th minutes. So let's just pause, take a moment, look at the minutes, and then we can take some votes for uh, to approve for Vivian. short one the May 2nd working session ones any any issues on that one sure. All right. why don't we have a motion to approve the May 2nd working session minutes this is so move. uh, moved second. by Dave seconded by Mark uh, all those in approve uh, unanimous all right. so we, we knocked off the May 2nd one I think we're really short uh, so now we have the April 25th minutes Six pages of minutes for that meeting. Man, we were working hard. We were working hard. It was a hard busy night. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot yeah, to say. The moon is here. What was that? Questions on the April 25 minutes? So move approval. Move by right, Dave. Move approval. Move to approve. Second by John. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 All right, so now we just have the last minutes, the May 9 minutes. Vivian, you're doing a good job keeping us current with these minutes. No, nothing to do. She can fight the critters for more hours. <laughs> All right, do we have a motion then to approve the May 9 minutes? So moved. Um, I move. Uh, we have a motion by Dave to Second. move. Uh, seconded by Peter on that with the note that as the minutes state, Bill Lunch is not present for that meeting. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to approve? Aye. Aye. Uh, unanimous, unanimous except for an abstention by Bill Vines. Okay. So that gets us to the minutes. Um, and it takes us through our agenda, but we have our planning board liaison member, Chris, who's been ever so patient out there. Anything for us, Chris? Yeah, a couple things. Great. Come on up. Oh, by the way, it's 332680. Mm. Second period. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, just a couple quick things. Uh, tomorrow at the planning board meeting, uh, we're going to be starting the meeting off with a workshop. It's going to be the second one of uh, our workshops related to policies. Um, if you're interested in reading any of the draft uh, policies that we're, we're reviewing, 
Uh, they're attached to the agenda. Um, so if you want to take a look, feel free. Um, there are a couple old policies in there that are related to, to stormwater um, that will probably end up re recommending get reviewed by this commission and DPW. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, um, we haven't gotten to those yet, but we will. Um, also on the agenda for tomorrow's uh, planning board is um, a project uh, for 11 School Street. Um, I don't know a ton about it yet. Um, it'll be the first presentation tomorrow. Um, they did mention in their uh, application that they will be coming to you because they do want to think about doing a uh, walkway near the Stony Brook area. Um, they're going to be converting an office building that's there um, into a med spa. Uh, so Do, that's excuse me, what? A, an office building that's at 11 School yeah. Street. Into um, what? A med, med spa. Med spa? Yeah. Medical spa? Yeah. Okay. So a health and wellness spa that has uh, nails and salt cave, things like that. So. Um, <laughs> We'll learn more more about it uh, tomorrow. You'll learn more tomorrow, yes. Yeah, but I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up that they do, according to the mm. application, plan on coming to you also. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any external work being done or if it's all going to be internal, uh, but I would assume that because of the proximity to Stony Brook that if there is external, it would probably have that, to come That to building you. was in front of us some years back for some permitting. Yeah, it's an interesting site. It is. I was yeah, just looking at factory. it on the map today, and I was surprised. Yeah, yeah. interesting site. We were out there some years ago. You remember it, Dave, for sure, Bill. Which one? No. Uh, School Street. Do you, do you remember that? That's when they did the West uh, Jump Street. Yeah, did West Jump Street. Right, right across yeah. from the yeah. railroad depot. The one that's we like. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the dam. Yeah. Well, it was recently sold, and there were seven. Outstanding certificates of compliance that were needed. Yeah, we oh, voted that. Six. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Somebody asked for them. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> See? Well, that Things was, are progressing. That was, that was the first one we ever saw that wanted to use heat out of water. Right? But yeah. that was only the last in a long list of projects that have been done over there. Yeah. And anything else coming up, Chris, that you can help us get thinking about? Uh, not, not to my knowledge. Um, okay. The contractor yard on um, uh, the corner of uh, Ten Pike and Mill. Yes, that is on the agenda for tomorrow. Um, what Chelsea Lumber? No, Ten Pike no. and Mill. Uh, Turnpike it's and a Mill. new place. Martel yeah. Tree wants yeah. to Turnpike and Mill, right yeah. up on the hill. Yeah, right yeah. in the corner. Right in the corner. The parking lot's on the yeah. ledge. Yeah, on Martel, the ledge. Martel Tree wants yeah. to put his yeah. So that's on the yeah. agenda for tomorrow as well. What is he coming for? It's no wetlands. It's zone it's no wetlands. Isn't it? As far as I know, there are no wetlands. There's no wetlands there. No, yeah. no wetlands. No, it's all rock. There's a lot of neighbors. <laughs> Isn't it a zone industrial already? People, because I found it is, but contractor yards are no external contractor there. yards are special permit. Wow, it's been right. zoned that way for a long time. Well, good. Well, thanks, Chris, for the update. All right. Thank, thank, thanks for staying with us. To you. Keep doing Maybe we ought to put him first on the agenda so he doesn't have to sit here all night. I don't mind sitting here. Oh, okay. Right. Well, you can hear what we're getting ourselves into. All right. Well, let's, let's, get, let's give Chris the option to ask David to bump up on the agenda if yeah, you need Yeah, seriously. To. Yeah, if, if, if you, you, you want to come here, earlier, so we, can, we can work yet. Maybe but we're welcome to have you. Okay. Glad now to have you. Now you can watch us on YouTube the next day. Now you're aware of Brick Hill and Road. Yeah. By being there. Yeah. The first you've and, you've been, and not the first time you've been down East Chelmsford at, at all, you know? And I didn't realize that was there. <laughs> <laughs> East Chelmsford? <Chelsea>, uh, <laughs> East Chelmsford. Don't think there is. You want to see me? There. 37, 30. All right, well, anyway. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks so much. Good Let's have a motion then to adjourn. So moved. Celtics. Uh, Carl on the motion to adjourn. And uh, John with a second. All those in favor? Aye, aye. aye, aye. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, good evening, everyone. Have a nice night. Thank, Thank you, you so much. TV.